Up next is our main event, Asselino Freitas taking on Zahir Rahim. Max, the last time we saw Zahir Rahim, he was taking on Eric Morales, and many people didn't give him a chance. But Rahim pretty much handled Morales with ease. Yes, and yet he was still ignored. A guy who'd been <laughs> ignored for most of his career was ignored uh, yet some more. Here we see the Rahim and Morales fight. With the exception of one moment in the 11th round, Rahim dominated the entire fight. He dominated with his jab. He used combinations. He used movement without running. There you see examples of the left jab. Even his power, where people would have criticized his power in the past, was on display against Morales, who has a good chin. The right hand landed. There it was. And Morales went reeling into the ropes. Yeah, Raheem was supposed to be a speed bump for Eric Morales on the way to a rematch with Manny Pacquiao. And Morales eventually got to that rematch yeah. with Pacquiao. But he arrived there with one more blemish on his uh, record. Yeah, he just went right over the bump and just went on to the fight with Pacquiao. And Raheem was still locked out of the money fights. You know, for Raheem supporters, you might think this is an issue of justice against Rocky Juarez. He seemed to be robbed because even with three point deductions, had those point deductions not occurred, Raheem would have lost the fight anyway in a fight that looked like it could have gone either way. He beats Eric Morales handily, and this is his first fight. This is last September, almost a year ago, months and months ago. This is his first fight since then, and it's not the monster payday he was hoping for. We asked Raheem in the fighter meetings if he feels, in light of Freitas' quitting against uh, Diego Corrales, right. if he has what it takes to dig deep in the moment of truth, the heart to win. Raheem feels that he's been conditioned by those Philly gym wars to do it. Mm -hmm. but when asked about Freitas, he said he has money. He doesn't need heart. Raheem needs heart, and he wants the money. I'll tell you what, this young man, Zahir Raheem, he has battled the odds both inside and outside the ring. Raised on the tough streets of Philadelphia, Raheem was forced to grow up quickly also because he was responsible to raise his own child. Zahir Rahim's story is one of love and determination. A boxer and single father with sole custody of his daughter, Azina. Thank you. Whatever I had to do, I was willing to do. They would be freezing outside, man. And I would put a heated blanket inside the stroller, wrap it up. I wrap myself up, and I'm out there running, training for a fight, you know. And uh, at the gym, I have to take my car seat out the car, put it, take it in the gym, sit it right next to me, and I go to work. For the first two months of Azina's life, Raheem didn't even know he had a daughter. A phone call from Azina's mother's family changed everything. I didn't know what to do because it was just all of a sudden instant and it was just very overwhelming. But it was such a precious moment looking at this child and they said it was mine, which I wasn't too sure of at the time. When he brought the child to me, I said, yes, she's yours. I saw Zaire in her. Same eyes, the spirit, I saw his soul in her. And she had my complexion, my nose, my head. <laughs> I'm looking at two months. Today, Azina is five years old, and looking at this peaceful scene, you would never guess Zahir's own violent upbringing on the streets of Philadelphia. To some people, they would say it was tough. To me, I'd say it was life. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and the friends that I had and knew, eight or nine of them were actually dead or in jail. One of six children born to Gwen Covington and Eric Still, it was Rahim's mother who was a disciplinarian forced to deal with his propensity for fighting. As he began to get older and go to school, that's when I began to have the problems, you know, going out and fighting and this and that. Rocks, bottles, sticks, whatever you can find, you know, you're losing the battle. I mean, I, when I fight, I like to always pick on the bigger guys, so sometimes I might need a little extra help. At age 11, Raheem's love for fisticuffs sent him to a local boxing gym for the first time. I was, like, mesmerized by a picture of Muhammad Ali, and I looked at the ring, I never seen a real ring before, and I thought, wow, that's what I want to do. Boxing is an art. It was saving him from channeling that energy into something negative. It was teaching him self-control. It was teaching him how to focus. I got it, baby. Last September, Raheem's focus was never clearer as he outboxed and outslugged Eric Morales. The biggest win of his career put him on the lightweight division radar. 
But it's Zahir's daughter who's been the foundation of his biggest change. Jesus blessed us fully. I've seen him mature a lot because the boxing in that field, sometimes you lose touch with your true feelings, love and patience. You have to become another person. So this little girl has brought out a lot of good things in Zahir. She said, you're so good. But this tale of love and transformation almost never happened. A rift with Azina's mother and money problems between the two. Game is 135 pound lightweight battle, and there you see Freitas is a year older. Both fighters are 5'7, and we mentioned the arm length again, measured from the armpit to the end of the arm, both coming in at 23 inches, both hitting the 135 pound limit perfectly. But look at Freitas, he stepped on our unofficial HBO scales tonight, comes in weighing 150 pounds, four more. Than Raheem. Now rules for the bout with Max. They see the unified rules once again because there's a trinket associated with this fight. Really, this fight is about establishing the leading contender for the winner of the Castillo Corrales fight coming up in June. That guy's the champ. This guy will be his leading available contender. But because of the trinket, you get the unified rules. And there he is, Asselino Freitas, 37 and 1 with. 32 knockouts from Bahia, Brazil. A former two-time belt holder, once in the 130-pound division, and also in the 135-pound division. And now for more on Freitas, here's Max. Guy didn't have his own bed until he was 17 years old. And breastfed until he was five years old. That's his nickname, Popo means slurping, I assume, in Portuguese. Uh, you know, we think there's some poverty in this country, and there is, but this is a whole other circumstance. We're talking about uh, Brazil. Winning on the scorecards after seven rounds versus Corrales really turned boxer against Corrales, and Corrales basically landed three punches that night. Each one resulted in knockdowns. After the third one, Freitas had, seen, had, had felt enough. He gave Casamayor, Joel Casamayor, the decorated amateur, and, and accomplished professional. His first professional loss, loss that fight was to establish the best fighter at 130 pounds. Freitas beat Casamayor in a close fight, and he was the man. Yeah, unanimous decision, 114 and 112 on all three scorecards. In Brazil, there is Pele, Ronaldo, and Asselino Freitas. He is simply a rock star in his native Brazil. When he fought Casamayor, an estimated 50 million people watched live. The fight started at 3 a.m. This guy, Max, is a superstar in his hometown. He is, and uh, you know, we have certain standards in this country, and in Mexico, for instance, where our attitude is essentially, you are willing to die in the ring, or you suck, buddy. Asselino Freitas made a choice to stop fighting. He didn't feel he could win the fight. He felt he was being hurt, and he decided enough was enough. The question is, if more is demanded of him, is he willing and able to produce more? Like Vitaly Klitschko, who was considered a quitter against Chris Bird, was stung by the criticism and then showed against Lennox Lewis that he had all the heart in the world. Asselino Freitas has a strong Brazilian contingent here in the crowd tonight. He has fought twice since the Corrales fight, winning both one on decision and one in a knockout. And now, Zahir Rahim is ready to make his way to the ring. Rahim from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, comes in at 27 and one with 16 knockouts. And now for more, here's Max. He was a 96 Olympian. That's the same Olympics that produced Floyd Mayweather Jr., Fernando Vargas, uh, Antonio Tarver, a host of successful professionals, and he feels he's finally shown that he belongs to that group. He lost in the second round of those Olympics. He hasn't fought since his win over Morales. Ivan Goldman, the Ring Magazine's Ivan Goldman, wrote recently that he should petition the Census Bureau to get somebody, anybody, to acknowledge his existence. Freitas is acknowledging it tonight. He got a boxing scholarship to Northern Michigan University, something you don't see very often. And his loss against Rocky Juarez, 12-round decision, was in fact a corrupt decision. I say corrupt because it was a close fight, yes. Juarez got the decision, but Raheem had three points deducted. Even if you give him back the three points, he still loses the fight. I'm sorry, that's hometown cooking. 
Raheem's nickname, the King. When we talked to him yesterday, we asked him, did he gain more confidence after the Morales fight? And he said, hey, look, I, I wouldn't have spent $5,000 on, on my outfit coming into the ring if I wasn't confident before the fight. What he said he appreciated was the fact that the media and the fans started to speak up for him to say, hey, you know what? This guy beat the man. Let's give him an opportunity. By his own admission, his late amateur and early professional experience humbled him and really does show very little of the arrogance that you associate with athletes on his level coming off their biggest win. Shows a remarkable uh, degree of humility. Uh, that in spite of the king's crown he wears to the ring. He's promoted by top rank and he says that uh, all the bad feelings that he had after the Morales fight are gone. He felt disrespected after he won that event. That nobody from top rank came over and showed him any love because they expected Morales to win the fight and that they had upset the plans. But now he says everything is all right. He passed up, Max, a couple of fights that were offered to him. They were for little money, $20,000 a fight, and both the fights were off television. He just said, you know what? I feel like I deserve better. He's not exactly getting a king's ransom for this fight. He's getting a nice payday, nothing to retire on. But this was the first significant fight that came along, and he felt that he had attained the level where he deserved, he'd earned significant fights, and finally he got one. All right, the King and Popo are ready. Let's send it up now to Michael Williams for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and again, welcome to the largest casino in the world, Foxwoods Resort Casino, here in Mashantucket, Connecticut, as tonight. Arthur Blulow's Banner Promotions and Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated present the HBO Boxing After Dark main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO Lightweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Nimirov and sanctioned by the Mashantucket Pequot Athletic Commission Executive Director Joe Latelier, Commissioner Peter Timothy. This championship bout also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. Supervising ringside is WBO President Francisco Balacarcel. The three judges ringside scoring this bout will be Glenn Feldman, Clark San Martino, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, veteran referee, Mr. Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in tonight at 135 pounds. Right. From Las Vegas, Nevada, the former U.S. Olympian brings an impressive professional record of 27 victories against one defeat, 16 victories by way of knockout. And tonight, he enters the ring ranked number three by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, Introducing Zahir King Rahim. And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the red corner, wearing the green, yellow, and blue. He too weighed in tonight at 135 pounds. His professional record, 37 victories, 32 by way of knockout, and he too carries a single defeat. From Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number one in the world by the WBO, presenting the former WBO junior lightweight champion, the former WBA super featherweight champion, and the former WBO lightweight world champion, Asalino Popo Freitas. Nice job, boy. Real nice job. Good. Gentlemen, you were given your instruction both in English and Portuguese. Please obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. God bless you both. Touch gloves. Asalino Freitas started out his career 29 fights, 29 knockouts. Started out 
as a puncher, but his trainer, Oscar Suarez, tried to turn him now more into a boxer. There's no doubt what Zahir Rahim likes to do. He is a slick technician in the ring, using his quick hand speed and solid foot movement. See right away though, Freitas also has very good hand speed. And typically, you think of the, the puncher in a fight as the more plodding, slower guy. In this case, I'm not so sure. Freitas is quick with his hands and feet. Raheem keeps his feet pretty spread. Which is which is his style, and a lot of people, especially my trainer, likes to always keep my feet a little closer. Also, Lennox, you'll see him bend down a lot uh, when he gets on the defensive. With that wide base there. That's one of the things that Morales said it made him tough to hit because he, he would squat down step, so step. low and then roll his shoulders. Great right you will notice some pretty strong legs. Loves to play soccer. At home, get out, get he's got out. a mini Push soccer up. field uh, at his Very house. Good. Suarez says he and his brothers can run all day. And you see the lower body strength. Freitas also has shown in his career for as a dynamic offensive fighter like Trinidad or Tyson coming up. He showed that unlike those guys, he had a plan B. He had a second gear. He could do other things. He, if, if his aggression wasn't working, but he may have begun to confuse what allowed him to survive against Casamayor, as Raheem landed a nice one too, with what got him there. What put him in the position to win that fight was his kind of naked aggression, and he's abandoned that largely. Started out with 29 straight knockouts, but he has gone the distance in five of his last nine fights. Asalino Freitas, oh. and now Freitas. Grabbing his forehead. Okay. Complaining of a headbutt. There was definitely a clash of heads there. When there's a cut over Zahir's time. Left eye. Neutral corner. No corte. No corte. Comprende? Did you get a tempo? I understood that one. That said no blood. Get a tempo? Okay. Seguro ahora. But I do believe I did see some. Stay there. Stay there. Some blood over the left stay. eye Peter. of Zahir Rahim. This cut is a butt. His abrasion is a butt. Accidental butt. Time in. Which is important to note. But don't punch, don't punch. Because if the fight is stopped because of that butt, that's a way to push it for four rounds, then it's a tech no contest. Because of these guys' style, you're going to get a lot of clashes of heads because they both come in when they throw in punches. Step, step, step. And there you see the blood starting to trickle down the left eye of Raheem. In between rounds, they speak Portuguese in Freitas's corner. We will hear Marco Santos. Interpreting. You gotta make him miss. Miss the points. Gotta hit him hard. Very good. Looking good. Una vez que vos se comienza a soltar, esa mano va a entrar. No quiero que busque la mano todavía, gente. Adiós. Ya lo sabe, Ulises. Out of abrasion, accidente. Accidente, okay. cabeza. No problem. The headbutt was accident. I want to see you hitting. Hitting hard. Make him miss. So Here you're going to see a, the clash of heads. Definitely accidental. Raheem was coming in and... Hey, babe, come on. Just one of those unfortunate things. It's the point you mentioned, though, with both of their styles. They both like to come in, so it's not unusual that that occurred. Freitas, as we mentioned, has fought twice since the loss to Corrales here at Foxwoods. One of those fights was a 
one round knockout. So he's only fought one round in the last 16 months. So he sparred about 110 rounds, Lennox, to get ready for this fight as he catches Raheem with an overhand right. Raheem quickly shakes his head as if to say, you didn't touch me. Don't punch, don't you punch. see when they both punch, punch at the same time, it's not Raheem beating Freitas to the punch. Not that Freitas necessarily has the edge in hand speed, but he's certainly not being outsped by Raheem, which is bad news for the guy who doesn't hit as hard. Lennox during long layoff. Did you worry about ring rest at all? All the time. I mean, the sparring. Break, break, the sparring out, definitely out, helps you. Out. Once you spar a lot, that's that's going to take a lot of the rust out. The only problem is it's always better to fight in the ring because you get the excitement. No get the excitement of the fight, on, and you know. The energy level is different. So you mean it's better to fight fights, actually, on, live guys. fights in the ring. Live sparring. fights are always better than sparring, but uh, if you know, if you can have the live fights, definitely get into the sparring. Raheem, on the other hand, sparred just 30 to 35 rounds for this fight against just had one sparring partner in camp, Freitas, with a nice overhand right. Raheem's trainer says he doesn't want to leave it all in the gym. He wants his fighters to be hungry when they get into the ring. Look, that's it, that's it. Freitas with an oh, uppercut. Very good. very good, thank you. That landed. And Steve Smoger says it's a slip. Freitas is carrying this fight so far on the right hand. It's not a huge advantage to either guy, but so far where there is an advantage, it's Freitas hot-shotting with the right hand. with a left hook to the body. Comes back with a right. Max, you know this is very emotional. This is a very emotional fight for both boxers. You know, in the uh, fighter meetings yesterday, when you asked Freitas, champ, if how he feels about being called a quitter, does he need to prove anything to anyone? He said no, but he choked back tears as he said no. Well, we'll be back in a minute, but right now, let's take a look at what HBO Sports has in store for us starting next Tuesday. Punches in the second round. Asselino Freitas landing 7 of 18 for 39%. Raheem 2 of 15 for 13%. You heard Raheem's trainer Don House asking very good, this very fighter good. to work from angles. House now with Raheem for the second fight. His first fight in the corner was the Morales fight back in September. He also said, you heard him at the very, right before the round began, take your time, it sounded like. I don't know if that's right, the right advice here, Lennox, because without much happening, where there is activity, it's coming from Freitas, and in a close fight, you can't really afford to give away rounds where there's not a lot of action, can you? No. Freitas lunges in with a right hand, and Raheem, for the third, Fourth time of the fight, lowers his shoulder and bowls Freitas into the ropes. So why would his corner tell him to take his time? Maybe because he's a bit too, he's a bit too high for right now. And they want him to settle down and get into some boxing, use that jab, use his quickness, his natural reflexes. I think when he's more relaxed, he's a, he's a better fighter. Freitas catching Raheem. 
with an overhand right. Raheem now coming back with a jab, working the lower body. The guy who doesn't hit as hard and is no faster than the opponent who hits harder better have better technical skills. And I think Raheem's technique is better than Freitas's, and he's going to have to rely on that. Raheem needs to throw that double jab out there and keep Freitas busy. When Raheem fought Eric Morales, Morales was fighting at 135 for the first time in his career. Many believe that Morales came in a little bloated, looked sluggish. But Freitas is a solid 135. You saw on our scales tonight, our unofficial HBO scales, weighed in at 150 pounds. You also look at their last significant fights. Freitas lost to Corrales, who went on to have one of the greatest fights ever with Castillo. He won. If you look at Raheem's opponent, Eric Morales, he went on to be knocked out by Manny Pacquiao. Dominated in more thorough fashion, if anything, than he was against Raheem. So, in a way, you could look at this fight so far as an indictment of Eric Morales. Nice left jab by Zahir Rahim. Startles Freitas. Though Freda, uh, Rahim it did have a much better round this round. Throw combination sharp. Speed. Let's go. Shots to the face. Now has to use the. Now has to use a brain. Think smart. Do very good. You move much faster than him. Let's go. You're going to see a nice jab by Raheem, nice and straight. That's what I say, straightest punch is always more effective. Raheem in his 10th year as a professional, 27-1. The lone loss to Rocky Juarez. Freitas in his 11th year, 37 and 1. The lone loss to Corrales. Freitas with 32 knockouts. Step out, step out, step out. Hands up, hands up. The he accidental headbutt that we saw in the first round doesn't seem to be a problem. Both corners doing a nice job. That's important because later on in the fight, you don't want to be worried about a cut over your eye. Great job with work to the body. A strong left hook. You see Raheem outmaneuver Freitas. He's technically better, but then Freitas' natural athleticism you know, usually the puncher in the fight isn't the fast twitch muscle guy. In this case, he is. And Freitas is able to cover mistakes with athleticism, hand speed. He's doing a nice job of countering. Lunges through with the right hand. That catches Raheem. Raheem spins him in the corner now. Three. Don't punch, don't punch. Three. Don't punch, don't punch. Step, step. Suarez, when he hooked up with Ocelino Freitas, he said, you know what? We know the guy's a strong puncher. What we want to do is we want to round out his game and let people know how quick he is, as Max has been saying, and let him show some boxing skills. Took a lot of heat for that. Many people believe that's what crossed him up against Corrales. But Freitas doing a nice job of boxing and hitting with power. 
And he comes through with the right hand, but referee Steve Smoker says, no knockdown. The feet got locked up, and it was a slip, not a knockdown. The referee's an excellent referee. He actually did my first fight in America. And he definitely, oh. And now Raheem unloads with the right hand. Freitas momentarily stunned. I think it was Raheem who was stunned, actually <laughs> countering <laughs> Freitas <laughs> as he kind of fell into the corner. You know, Freitas is always the better athlete throughout his whole career, even against Corrales. But Corrales has unnatural punching power. Raheem does not. He can't, he can't just fall back on that. Zahir Rahim and Asselino Freitas both with something to prove tonight in Foxwoods. You got to relax, baby. You got to relax. You got to relax, baby. You're working a little bit too hard. You're pushing yourself. You're trying to do it too hard. You're pushing it. Need to, to box in here at the distance. I gotta see this knockdown again, whether it's a slip or a knockdown. It's a right hand followed by a Brazilian jiu jitsu move. Yeah. Yeah, but does, did the punch there instigate? Even if, even if it did, he still kind of tripped him. We're a third of the way through this lightweight matchup between Asselino Freitas and his Brazilian green and gold taking on Zahir Rahim in the white trunks. Whenever Freitas has stepped up in competition, he's dominated early. He dominated Casamayor over the first half of the fight. He dominated Corrales over the first half of the fight. It was the second half of those fights that were interesting. Raheem spins Freitas around in the corner and rips off combinations. Freitas with a straight right hand. The boxing uh, starting to go out the window here, turning into a mini brawl. Very good, both of you. It's been a sloppy fight, but a fight that is nevertheless being engaged on at a high level. Well, you can feel the sense of urgency, though, from both fighters. Both fighters repeatedly hear Don House telling his fighters are here, Raheem, hey, calm down, slow down, relax. But you can almost, you can see the sense of urgency that Raheem feels. Very important fight for him. He definitely wants to win this fight. He doesn't want to lose. He, he senses that he's a bit behind. He's not doing the things that he needs to do. He wants to get in there and, and, and get some shots in. Zahir Rahim saw several of his 1996 Olympic teammates go on to win world championships. Floyd Mayweather, David Reed, Antonio Tarver, Fernando Vargas, Eric Morrell, they all won world titles at one point. But he says, you know what, now is my time. Rahim needs to get that jab going. Very important to get that job going. Right now he's sitting back waiting when he shouldn't be. This is not the time to sit back and wait. He needs to get that job flowing. I think Lennox that he is afraid of the pot shot and counter right hand from Freitas and doesn't want to take chances with the left jab. Give Freitas a chance to counter. A nice left jab from Raheem. You like this action. We've mentioned at the top of the telecast, it's the 10th anniversary of Boxing After Dark. 
all year long, we're going to be showing you some memorable moments. And here's the first fight, Marco Antonio Barrera against Kennedy McKinney. This is a war. This is just a war, Roy. A backdoor war. This is about as good as it gets. Guys, you could just do a highlight rip of uh, Marco Antonio Barrera on Boxing After Dark to highlight how exciting this yeah, is. Yeah, it's very exciting. Guys, been it's more. Push, push off, hands up. Hands up. We're working on a good one here. Max Kellerman scorecard there. That's Freitas up by a point. Raheem has landed just 18 jabs through five push rounds, up, up, according up. to CompuBox. Protect yourself in there. Protect yourself. Can he win a slugfest, Lennox, with the Ocelino Freitas? Well, he said he's been in some gym wars, and he's used to it. So when it, when it gets to a rough point, I think he's going he's gonna to get rough himself. Especially late in the fight, guys. Freitas, as I said, when he stepped up, He's wilted. He survived against Casamayor late, didn't against Corrales. And here you see Raheem really coming on. Raheem catches Freitas with a one-two, tosses Freitas to the ground, and then apologizes to referee Steve Smogan. He was so scared that he would be DQ'd there and, the, and, and this opportunity would be up in smoke. Freitas definitely was hurt there because nobody throws out their mouthpiece for nothing. So he definitely wanted a bit more rest, so, you know, that just indicates that he got hurt. And this is commonplace with, with Freitas. We've Next seen him do this repeatedly. Point. Next time is a point. Okay. Spit out the mouthpiece, that is, when he's in trouble. Steve Smoger telling Zahir Rahim. Because he had no reason to spit out the mouthpiece at that point. Next time for the rough tactics from Rahim, and Smoger says he's taking away a point. Meanwhile, before that takedown, Raheem had landed about three or four flush shots. Push off, push off. So here Raheem believes that if he can continue to put pressure on Asselino Freitas, as the late rounds arrive, Freitas will quit. That's good, that's good. And that could be why you see Raheem. Keep your head up, Zahir. Keep your head up. Using the tactics that he's using. Hooking don't punch, him in, don't punch. Rolling Step. him into the, the ropes. Leaning on him, pushing him. Why don't you know a thing or two about leaning on guys? Very important when it comes down to a, a big fight like this. In the, in the last rounds, that's where it really, really pays off. Because if you've been leaning on someone for, for six rounds, he's going to feel it in the later rounds. What we've seen in this round in the last couple rounds is Zaheer Rahim's superior timing, well, offsetting up, up. Freitas's superior Get athleticism. No not, no, no, no. Kofo broke. Vamos, mira, usted no tiene que estar haciendo eso. Tenemos que estar metiéndole codo, cabeza, lo que sea, porque ese ese cara tiene toda más intención para vos, ¿eh o no? Yes, all the bad intention for you, but don't don't feel bad about that. Just go after fight. We have the strength inside you. You're pretty strong. Si no, esto no es deporte de vos, ¿eh? Okay, aquí el campeón es vos. Don't talk it to him. Spit on the mat. You gotta talk it right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is Raheem throwing some good punches. And he realizes he hurts him. He wants to get him off him. He's frustrated, so he throws him down. That's a situation where frustration takes the better of you. It's taken Zahir Rahim a long time to get to this stage. The last thing he wanted to do was give, get himself disqualified. And there you saw him pleading with Steve Smoger. Apologizing. I'm sorry. But let me go on. Freitas with a nice one, too. You heard Oscar Suarez's impassioned plea in the corner to really get busy. You know, Freitas has gotten away from that naked aggression, but. Maybe if he doesn't get back to it, he winds up exposed anyway because Raheem will undress him in a boxing match. The sixth round, one of the best for Raheem, landing 17 of 38 punches for 45% connect rate. Raheem with a straight right. Raheem's cut man, Dr. John Thompson, doing a very nice job with that cut over his left eye. Don't punch. Step, 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 step. Raheem catches Freitas with a quick left hook, and it comes back with a nice jab. But just by Freda stepping it up, stepping up the pace early, he was having a much better round. Missing with that right uppercut. Raheem beating Freitas with the punch there with the left jab. Big right hand from Zahir Raheem. Lands flush. Looks like the pace is slow down just a touch. Both boxers definitely considering the next move. Stay up. Stay up, Zahir. I noticed that Zaire goes down a bit, bit low, maybe a bit too low, but he's definitely getting away from punches, which he needs to. As the pace slows, and that may be why good right hand from Freitas, he does, he doesn't do as well later. But as his kind of athleticism dissipates, with as his energy dissipates later in a fight, and the pace slows, it seems to favor Raheem. This is the dreaded. Seventh round. Good work from both fighters in the seventh. Wait, he's going double jab right here, right? And you looking dead at him. Don't wait on him. You got to, you got to create this shit first. All right? He's shooting that double jab and our right hand behind. All right? All right? All right? All right? You out? Yeah, but you, but you got to stay composed. You, you overstepping everything. You overstepping, you overstepping everything, all right? Stop overstepping everything, all right? Okay. Yeah. The cut's okay. You're all right with the cut. The cut's all right. All right? Five of Asselino Freitas's last nine fights have gone the distance. We are now in round eight of 12. Raheem is throwing the snappiest jab I've seen so far tonight. He needs to get on that jab. Very important. Push off, push off. Max Overcall was in the eighth out, round. Let him out. Stop pushing. The Corrales forward. fight where uh, Corrales started to inflict some damage. 
And while Raheem obviously is no Corrales as a puncher, he did hurt Eric Morales with a right hand late in their fight. Nice one two to the body by Asalino Freitas. Double job. That's where you see the double job. He needs to do more of that. Don't punch, don't punch. Very step, important. Step, 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 step. Asalina Freitas went literally from rags to riches through boxing. Step, step, step. He's a major celebrity in his hometown of Bahia, Brazil. We talked to him on uh, Lennox yesterday. We asked him, hey, you know, why does this mean so much to you? You basically can walk away from this. And people are still going to love you. You're still going to be a star. And he says, you know what? Don't punch, don't punch. Step, step. I don't want to let these Keep people down. I don't want to let the fans down who showed up at the Corrales fight. I don't want to let the hometown fans down who supported me throughout my career. And they're definitely back here tonight supporting him. Don't punch. Don't punch. No, 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 no. Raheem's motivation is clear. This guy is taking the long way home to get here. No punch, no punch, step, step. No go Nice left, and Raheem comes back on the right. Not behind the head. Then rocks Freitas. I'm sorry, not behind the head. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Work at the distance, hit hard with the hard right. On top of the right. Let's, let's be smart. They're going down with you here. Your left hand is right, it's perfect. Right hand. Block that hook right off. Boom, boom. Yeah. Lennox Zahir Rahim sparred 30 to 35 rounds for this fight. Asalino Freitas, uh, well over 100. And, and you said, you know what? You like to spar about 30 to 35 Rico, rounds. Punch, punch. You didn't worry about getting tired uh, in the latter rounds. Actually, you felt stronger as the fight went on. Yeah, because, you, you know, you, you train for a certain amount of rounds because that's the amount of rounds you're going to be off, fighting. Push off. And Very good. my trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, at the time, always used to tell me, yo, you don't need to leave it all in the gym. Save some for the ring. And I believe his trainer feels the same way. Max Kellerman is uh, now with Zahir Rahim's manager, Cameron Duncan. And Max, there's a problem with treating uh, Zahir's cuts in the corner? Cameron, what is the problem right now in the corner? He uh, ran out of cut medicine. Uh, the doctor that uh, they brought ran out of medicine. So uh, I had my guy run and find Jacob Duran, who's a professional cut man, who was working other fighters on the show. And uh, he brought medicine in. And I asked Peter Timothy if I could, uh, the commissioner, if I could just switch cut men. And uh, he said, no, he's not going to. Why not, gonna... not just give the other cut man the medicine? Well, we did that. But, but I thought it'd be better if, if we let the other guy, you know, he's, he's been around a lot longer to take care of the problems. Thank you, Kevin. All right, so we'll have to keep an eye on the cut over Zahir Rahim's left eye. Dr. John Thompson will continue to handle the duties. Fight depth 
definitely slowing down here in the latter rounds. Both fighters exchanging left hooks there. You know, these are a lot of uh, competitive rounds, but I'm consistently preferring to hear Raheem in them. I think he's landing the cleaner, more effective punches. Freitas just landed in a right uppercut, and Raheem looked like he grabbed Freitas. It's hard, it's hard to tell with Raheem. That's true, because he does he, squat he, down. He slowed down and, right. and frequently looks off balance. I don't know. He's ducking pretty low in there, and the referee has warned him about that. Now, anytime you duck and it's below the waist, that's a bit too low. And there you hear Steve Smoker telling him to keep his head up. Break, step back, step back, break. Break, step back. This guy, this guy, this is you, you and Donald, so this is what he's going to say. Listen, he's ready to go. But listen, you got to over, you overstep in that right hand. All right? Every time you do a right hand, you out of position. No left hook behind. All right? Let me show you a replay of the uppercut. Good short uppercut inside. There's a different angle. And as you can see, Raheem's low is just, you know, it's, it's difficult to be that low because you get knocked off balance, which he did. So you think that was not from the punch, that was from him being off balance that he was grabbing? He was off balance looking to grab at the same time. His feet weren't right. I thought in that round, guys, there were three or four or five punches that Raheem landed at least as good as that one by Freitas. Tell you what, CompuBox agrees with you. The power punches in round nine, Break, 11 punch, of 23 for Raheem for 48%. Freitas, 5 of 24. You know, just because one guy comes in with a reputation as a dynamic puncher, which Freitas certainly has and he deserves, does not mean that when they exchange, punch, step, step, the step, step. guy with a better step, step, reputation necessarily earns those points. I think Raheem, though, Clearly, throughout his career, has not been the kind of puncher Freitas has, is landing the sharper, better shots here. Step around, step around. Freitas may be sensing. It's time to turn it up. And let's give him credit. We've talked about the, the matchup with Diego Corrales. It didn't go his way. He was involved in in a war against Jorge Barrios in August of 2003. He was down in the 8th and 11th rounds, but was able to come back and knock out Barrios in the 12th. So you can question the guy allegedly having no hard one to put against Corrales, but he has shown that he has, does have some metal and he can't get up off the canvas. Well, absolutely. Many considered that the fight of the year that year. Freitas is complaining to the ref right there. Sometimes in a situation when you're complaining to the ref, that's when the other boxer takes that advantage and punches you at the same time. So it doesn't, sometimes it's not good to complain to the ref. Yeah, what's the point, Lennox, about even complaining? I mean, has it ever, you ever found that it helps you? You well, complaining to the ref? There are a couple fights I've complained to the ref, and at that same time, my opponent just throws punches. It doesn't help <laughs> one bit. I was about to say, because that's exactly what Raheem was doing when Freitas was trying to get the attention of Steve Smoker. Example, Holyfield fight. That's right. Good long left jabs to the body that Freitas just landed, two of them. Excuse me, Raheem just landed. Step around. Inside the tough gyms of Philadelphia. Even this 
round, guys. Freitas was having a better round, but the hero Raheem was landing cleaner shots. He may be known for being a technician, but uh, Raheem showing he can bang as well. Make sure he misses his points. Keep him moving very good. Jab, jab. Okay? Jab with the left. Counter attack, counter attack. Work your counter attack. Vamos lá, vamos lá, você é Double jab right hand hook, all day with it. That's all I need from you, double jab right hand hook. You can hit him all day with that. But you overstep it. Huh? It's over. It's over. You can't take your power without believing. You just gotta catch him on the button. You gotta catch him on the button. You can, you, you can definitely hear the Brazilian fans in the background. Supporting their fighter. Trying to give Oslo and Freitas a lift. Good right hand to start the round from Freitas. When Zahir Rahim lost to Rocky Juarez, he did have three points taken away from him for holding and hitting, but he also said that fight was at 126 pounds. He had a difficult time making weight. It zapped out all his power. He says at 135 pounds, he feels so much stronger. And incidentally, Juarez is a good fighter. Without the point deductions, Raheem may have won that fight if it was scored fairly. And that was his only loss as a professional to hear Raheem. You start to hear the chants of Popo from the crowd. The Brazilian support for Asselino Freitas. But it only serves to fire up Raheem, who catches Freitas with a lunging left hook. Sometimes Raheem, when he throws that right hand, his right foot comes way ahead of his left foot, and that's a, a bad technical move. And sometimes you can get caught flat-footed like that with your feet square. You don't want your feet to be square when you're boxing. Always important to keep that right foot in the back as an anchor. How about the low rushes by Raheem on Lennox when he bowls Freitas in the corner? Fair play? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a tactic he, he decided he was going to employ tonight. We've seen it several times. Sometimes you can get caught coming in and it definitely, definitely a dangerous move, but it's definitely effective for Raheem right now. You want to know something, guys? I think the fans are amping Freitas up. I think he's winning this round, the first one in a while. Who would have thought the Brazilian Asselino Freitas would have a hometown advantage in Foxwoods here in Connecticut? Keep going forward, keep going forward. You give it too much distance. Make him miss all these points. You're not going to change anything now. Uh, 
The 135-pound division is wide open. Diego Corrales. Step around, Popo. Step out, Popo. At this Step point, out, the man Step to beat. For the winner, possibly could be looking at several fights. Corrales, Castillo. Last one. Guys, I have the fight scored with Raheem up three points. But if Freitas wins this round, I'll have it seven to five. Meaning if you change one round, you get a draw. I'm pretty sure there are judges who haven't seen the fight the way I have. This round could very well determine the outcome of the fight. Well, neither one of these fighters should feel like they have it uh, in the back. They both should feel like they need to win this round. Castillo and Corrales, they will get together on June 3rd. The winner, here, you can look ahead to a possibly bright future. The loser knows they might not ever get back to this stage. Well, if Freitas should lose, he's still marketable. He has a huge fan base in Brazil, and he is still will be perceived as an exciting fighter because he can punch. In so Brazil. here, Raheem, even if he should win this fight, has not looked spectacular enough necessarily to create demand, and yet has still looked so difficult that the risk will not be worth the reward for top fighters. He may be in the same situation as he was coming in. You know, that would be very frustrating for him. I mean, look, look at what Winky Wright went through, though, as well. It took Winky a while to finally break through. But eventually, if this guy... He beat Morales if he walks away with a victory here today. Eventually, people are going to have to pay attention to him. At least in the boxing world. Max, this is a close fight. How do you have it scored? Who do you think's winning this fight? You know, this round is very close. I think Raheem is up, as I said. But should Freitas win this round? Zahir Rahim taking nothing for granted. In the 12th and final round, he's been more aggressive. He's fired off more punches. The crowd chanting, trying to get behind Asselino Freitas. It's always difficult to win in someone else's backyard. One guy is a two-time title holder. The other just asking for a chance to get some respect. Freitas and Raheem wrapping up 12 rounds in style. Yeah. Folks, Boxing After Dark is back. Guys, we have seen this before. Both fighters celebrating as if uh, they emphatically won the fight. Freitas definitely started out strong, started out as the aggressor. His pace slowed down in the latter rounds, and Raheem steadied the ship, picked it up, and displayed more than just slick boxing skills, Lennox. Yeah, he looked pretty good. It was an awkward fight for both fighters. The styles definitely clashed. You know, both fighters, have, when they box, they box low. They keep their heads low and they rush in. But it was all around a great fight. And there you see the scorecard of Max Kellerman. He had Zahir Rahim winning seven rounds to five, 115 to 113 in favor of the 29-year-old Philadelphian. Freitas, definitely an emotional fella. As we await the decision, let's uh, tell you who the judges are. Glenn Feldman from Connecticut. A notable fight that he had. With Tony B. Giroff, many people thought that that fight was a lot closer than 117-109. Clark San Martino from Rhode Island. Corrales knocking out Freitas. He had it for Freitas through nine rounds, and that included 
two knockdowns by Corrales. And Steve Weisfeld out of New Jersey. Vladimir Klitschko, his defeat over Samuel Peter. That's pretty much a fair decision, 114 to 111. Klitschko knocked down three times in that fight, but he pretty much dominated otherwise. Well, here we go, Lennox. This thing could go either way here. Definitely a close fight. Uh, I would hate to be one of the judges right now. Both we good boxes. Put put good work in. Lennox, we have the answer to the question we've been waiting for. Let's send it up now to Michael Williams with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, in the main event of the evening, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Clark Sam Martino scores the bout 115 to 113. He sees it for Rahim. Judge Steve Weisfeld scores the bout 115 to 113. He sees it for Freitas. Your third and final judge, Glenn Feldman, scores the bout 116 to 112. For the winner by split decision, and now four-time world champion and new WBO lightweight world champion Asalino Popo Freita. One sixteen, one twelve from Steve Weisfeld in favor of Asselino Freitas. And we thought. I mean, definitely a close fight. Freitas winning in a split decision. The other two judges had it 115 to 113. One for Freitas and one, of course, for Raheem. The 116-112. Obviously, Weisfeld must have felt that Freitas was a busier fighter. And there you see the emotion as we take a look at the final punch stat numbers. Zahir Rahim landing five more total punches. Freitas throwing 121 more. Rahim landing at the higher connect percentage. We thought this would definitely be a boxing match, but we saw a lot of power between these two, and Rahim came on strong in the latter rounds, landing 17 more power shots than Asselino Freitas, and landing at a higher connect percentage, 76 to 233 for 33% to Freitas' is 24, yet it's Freitas who gets the split decision, and Max Kellerman is standing by with the victor, Max. Popo, congratulations. Do you feel redeemed after this fight in wake of the Corrales fight? Depois do Corrales, I learned a lot to know that Zahim was an adversary very difficult. After Corrales, he learns a lot. He knows also this next fight he has today will be very tough, for, very hard for him. We worked to fight with Zahim. When Rock Juarez pelou com Sahin, eu ajudei a Rock Juarez a pelear com ele. Yeah, he learned a lot for the last fight in the Rock Juarez for to Harim. He in San Antonio, Texas. He learned a lot, he learned a lot from him from that. You seemed very bothered by the headbutt. Were you stunned? It, it wasn't bleeding badly, but did it daze you? Doeu, machucou um pouco porque não geralmente as cabeçadas supercílio vem aqui do lado, eu não sabia como é que estava o corte. I didn't know how the score was, but it was hurting him a lot. You felt dazed by it? Did he feel hurt by it? Senti um pouco de dor porque ainda estava frio, era o segundo round, estava calentando. He felt a lot of his pain because it was cold, it was warm. So right away, as soon as he started fighting, he wasn't warm enough, then he felt right away the... the Here's the replay. Yes. But as soon as he got hit, he was cold. He knows it was an accident. There was a sense of urgency 
from Oscar Suarez in the corner as though you really had to step up the attack. And you never really turned into the old Asaleno Freitas. You never really rushed him as you used to rush opponents. Did you feel a sense of urgency? It's a good corner, a good trainer. It's a good corner, like Oscar is, the coach he has. He knows what's happening in the fight, he knows the fighter very well. He knows the corner, like Oscar is, the coach he has. He knows Asselino Freitas very well, he knows the corner, and he's very happy, very lucky to have a coach like Dan. Did the Brazilian fans get you pumped up in the last two rounds of the fight? You seemed to fight better when they started chanting your name. Me ajudou muito e para quem não sabe na história do Brasil, pela primeira vez tem dois campeões simultaneamente no Brasil mundial. For the first time has a champion, campeão, duas vezes. Claudio Pereira, Sertão e Asselino Freitas nunca, never, never. Champions from Brazil, world champions, Asselino Freitas, com o nome do outro. Valdemir Pereira, Sertão. Valdemir Pereira, Falcão. Sertão. E pelo por quarta vez eu estou sendo campeão do mundo. For the first time, for the fourth time, he's been like you know champion the world. Okay, the recognized lightweight champion will be the winner of Corrales Castillo. Do you want the winner of that fight? Era bom, era bom pensar nisso agora o Corrales ou Castillo. Mas eu quero aproveitar meu cinturão, eu quero aproveitar meu bebê que eu vou ver amanhã, que está com sete meses. Eu be good for him think about the now, but right now he want to enjoy his family, enjoy his coats, and the time for the now. Congratulations, Asselino. Thank you. We want to thank, wanna, thank Enet Cherry that helped us so much, everybody in Tampa. Uh, thank you, everybody at Extreme Gym. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for helping us. Extreme e Quarto Street, Zin. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless, America. God bless. God bless. All right, Lennox, your uh, old trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, said that's why he likes knockouts, to take it out of the judge's hands. Uh, do you feel that the decision was fair? No, it was a it was a great decision in the sense of, you know, it could have went either way. It was a situation where it came down to the judges, you know, what they what they saw, what they felt was important to them. The fight could have went either way. Ra Raheem had n has nothing to worry about, you know, he can always fight another day. He, did, he boxed great. I think it was a situation where he was, you know, falling off his feet a couple times and maybe a couple judges felt that, you know, he was getting hit. So, uh, like I said, it all breaks down to the judging. That's why you have to always keep it out of the judge's hands and, and <laughs> knock the guy out. All right, well, uh, Zahir Rahim is standing by with Max Kelly. Max? Zahir Rahim, Lennox Lewis just said that the decision could have gone either way, and many people feel that way. I thought you won. I'm sure a lot of people out there do. The close decisions in your career haven't seemed to go your way so far. Uh, not at all, Max, but... Um what can I say? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to keep fighting, though, you know, because I believe I'm a champ. You know what I mean? And the reason why they didn't go my way is because I'm going to these guys' hometown fighting them. You know what I mean? If that's what I got to keep doing, that's what I'm going to do until I get me a title. You're in Foxwoods. He's from Brazil. You're from Philly. What's your hometown? Philadelphia. I mean, look, look around. You look, look at all the, the people from Brazil here, man. It was overpopulated. Unbelievable. I was shocked when I came into the arena. You got off to a slow start. You seemed to take control in the middle of the fight. And then in the end, at the end of the fight, if he won those late rounds, he, it seemed on hustle as much as anything else. Do you feel the late rounds got away from you? Uh, no, Max, he was very awkward, you know, and I, I couldn't really put my shots together like I wanted, so I started switching things up. And uh, I, he hit me with a couple good shots, and I took them, and I figured, you know what, I'm going for the gusto, so I started trying to walk him down. I was trying everything I wanted to win. You hit him with three or four shots, and I've forgotten the round, in the round in which you body slammed him, essentially. He was holding on to you. It seemed to clear his head. You were so frustrated, you pushed him off. He's round six. He's his back slammed on the canvas, and you went to your knees, begging the referee uh, not to what disqualify you. What was going through your mind? Not to give me a point, like you know, like you said, I got you know the history of referees is scarred in my brain. So I was really apologetic. Here's the replay. The right hand hurt him. I was really apologetic for saying because he's hurting me because he was hurt, and I could feel how hard he was holding me. I'm like, let me go so I can let some shots go and hit him. So when I stand him, he actually played it off a little more, and I'm like, oh, sorry, please, don't disqualify me. Don't take the fight from me. Whatever it takes, I apologize, but I was really, like, when he was, I felt him holding on to me, I knew I hurt him. Once he didn't disqualify you, it seemed to go back to business. Did you feel you had a reprieve there? Uh, yes, Max, I did, you know, and, uh, I mean, you know, I took his shots, you know, and uh, 
like I told you before, I feel good, man. And, and, and I heard him in a couple shots. You know, people say I can't punch, but I can. He wasn't too eager to just run in. And, you know, my defense could have been a little better also. Okay. You seem to be back where you started from. The risk still won't be worth the reward for most fighters. What does Zaheer Rahim do? What do you do about this? I really don't know, Max. Uh, just keep fighting. Keep training, you know, just don't give up, and I won't. You know what I mean? I'm going to give, give me a world title. Congratulations on the effort. I thought you won it. It was close. Thank you very much, Max. I appreciate it. HBO, Worldwide Leader of Sports.